Hey guys, what is up? I'm Scott Tony here, or Lucas, and you guys another NHL 17 news or update video, whatever you guys want to call it. Today's gameplay series video and blog that dropped was all about ESHL, and they brought some great news. So pretty much throughout the trailer, they show different uh, customization that you'll see in ESHL, like new hairstyles, um, new faces, how you can actually customize the face, new arena uh, customization, new jersey customization, club customization. It was all focused on customization. Uh, and I'll leave the trailer down below because that's not really what I want to talk about. There's some cool stuff, some cool celebrations they showed off. Some cool hairstyles and stuff like that, but the main stuff I want to talk about is in the blog. So if you want to see the trailer, go click the link down below. All right, guys. The first thing I want to talk about is the general improvements they made to ESHL, uh, specifically the dropping games. Uh, so a lot of you guys know uh, one big issue with droppings ever since like NHL. 12 was uh, people not wanting to play goalie, not wanting to play defense, they only wanted the four positions, and people would just leave, 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 and it'd be really hard to get a game of sixes going. Uh, but in NHL 17, they uh, how the dropping games work is you select the general position you would like to play before you start your matchmaking search. Uh, this will help bring players together and allow them to play to their desired position. Uh, matchmaking will also factor in your competitive game rating to help find the best balance of skill and experience for both teams. So, if you're brand new to the game, you won't be against a team that has been playing for months. Uh, so, that's also really good to see. But the general position uh, searching is going to be fantastic. So, if you want to go into a game only playing forward, there you go. Search as, as a forward. Only want to play defenseman, search as defenseman. Only want to play goalie, search as goalie. I think it's a great addition, and uh, I'm very excited to see how it works. And two more things along with drop-ins. There are now group matchmaking, so you're allowed to uh, invite up to five other friends, obviously up to six players total, and uh, search in a drop-in like that. So that's cool to see. So if you guys don't want to make a club, uh, but just want to do some drop-ins together, you can do that. And also, there are now uh, persistent game sessions, so the lobby carries over for uh, ESHL drop-ins. That's awesome to see uh, because uh, in the last couple years, if you play with the team that you guys really, really like, like, hey, I love playing with this guy, uh, and after the game is over, that was it. Uh, but now it will be the same players in the same lobby. You guys can just keep on playing, playing, playing until you guys don't want to play anymore. And some really cool things to add to ESHL, which I hope they add to every other online mode, is the online connection quality uh, features, or whatever you guys want to call it. Uh, so first off, uh, there is a highlighted uh, connection quality bar. It will tell you how the connection is between your team and the other team. And there's also a real-time connection quality graph that shows during the pause menu and shows uh, your latency and stuff like that. Um, so that's awesome to see. I really hope that uh, whether that, that's in every online game, online versus shootout, hot, everything. That should be a default thing in games nowadays. Now getting into some of the, what they call anti-griefing improvements. So some of the things they're trying to do to make the gameplay less trolly, less uh, it's just more consistent and more uh, less people quitting, pretty much. Uh, the first thing is goalies quitting. So in ESHL club games, in club games only, uh, any game started with two human goalies requires those goalies to finish the game. Otherwise, their team is given a loss. So there's a lot of positive with that, and there's a lot of negative with that. If you guys have a goalie that's connection isn't the best, you guys may be getting a lot of uh, losses just because, hey, you lagged out. However, uh, a lot of there have been multiple cases of goalies dropping out uh, as soon as the puck drops, so that the other team is at an advantage with the computer goalie. That's no longer the case. So uh, there's a lot of positives, a lot of negatives. Interesting to see how that work out. Also, for dropping games, any team that has their goalie leave is then replaced with a backup goalie who is smaller and has a lower skill rating to level the playing field. So no longer uh, will another team be. Uh, uh, at an advantage since they have a commuter goalie and uh, again that is only for drop-ins in ESHL club games you have a loss if your goalie leaves so that's really 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 new uh, and uh, they've also improved team play for dropping games our coach their coach feedback system will keep tabs on your on your team play grade for skaters and goalies if you aren't being a good team players and are intentionally creating poor a, play, a poor playing environment for other players the coach may boot you from the game uh, some examples of this are going off sides, intentionally continuing the icing the puck, and removing goalies from the net. So, uh, I'm really interested to see if a goalie, if the coach will actually boot you. I mean, that intentionally going off sides, continually icing the puck, removing goalies, I mean, 
I, I, I'm all interested. It, it's interesting for sure, but I don't know how effective it will actually be. Uh, they've also reduced the number of pauses. Uh, there is now one pause per team, regardless of the number of players on the team. Each team will have one 30-second pause. Uh, this will not consume your regular timeouts that refreshes your lines. Uh, they also surfaced the visual settings option, limiting the pause menu so you don't have to go through a uh, full pause uh, to make those last minute camera adjustments and uh, so yeah that's good to see as well there's only one pause now instead of I think it's three at the moment uh, maybe two uh, but there's also a reduced grace period before the game counts so uh, once the puck drops the game is officially on no matter if it's in the first minute or not the game counts no matter what if you leave the game is a loss so uh, and I've also confirmed with some game changers that that is in hut as well so there's no more uh, starting up a hut game or ESHL game scoring in the first minute and them leaving it and it not counting I am so freaking happy to see that uh, it's, it, it's just the good thing for the game all right Right, guys now let's get into the player classes so every single player class that was in NHL 16 will be returning with four new player classes so far they said they'll use the NHL 17 beta to both tune the new player classes and possibly introduce new player classes which is cool to see uh, so the four new ones that we are seeing today are the hitting sniper Jumbo Playmaker, the two-way dangler, and the puck moving defenseman. And uh, they're all pretty self-explanatory. The hitting sniper is, a, is a, obviously a more physical, but has a better shot. Jumbo Playmaker, a tall, big body, but uh, can also make nice passes and stuff. The two-way dangler, uh, think of Pavel Datsuk, two-way forward that also has some nice dangles. Puck moving defenseman, Eric Carlson, I mean... I feel like these should have been in already. I mean, they're they're pretty simple things, and I think there's... I mean, it's nothing but good things. More classes means more variety, and uh, that's good for me. I'm definitely interested in using the Jumbo Playmaker, and uh, I think the Puck Move Defenseman has got to be one of the best. Um, just from the name itself, it should be one of the best classes uh, in ESHL, but we shall see. And another thing that I'm so happy to say is that captaincies are back in ESHL. Uh, I don't really know why they took them out this year, but um, it's just super weird to me that they didn't have captaincies. But I uh, don't think it will have any advantage other than having the A or C on your chest, which is good to see, and I'm happy it's back. But all in all, guys, I, I am super excited for NHL 17 ESHL. It looks fantastic. Uh, it seems like they're trying to get away from people club hopping. Uh, just every other game, just switching clubs just to be on different teams and they're trying to make people stick on one team, grind that out, and uh, I'm super excited for it. It looks awesome. I'm excited to see uh, how popular ESHL can really get. I already know LG is huge. I already know Pro Series is huge and stuff like that. Uh, so hopefully EA uses the popularity of those specific leagues and, uh, and Pro Series that they can help bring ESHL into the mainstream and kind of make it up there with Hut in the most played game mode. So uh, I'm super excited for ESHL. You'll definitely be seeing some of my channel in the future in NHL 17 and the beta. So guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know down below. Let me know also what you guys think think of the new ASHL features. What's your favorite one? Let me know down below. If you did enjoy, leave a like, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye!